Hey guys, welcome back to the show that answers your questions, gives you tips, and also tells you what the best airsoft fashion accessories are on the battlefield for 2014. I'm your host, Jonathan Higgs. And if you guys couldn't tell from the opener, we do have a new name and thanks to you for all your feedback on not only the date change, but the name change. And because a lot of the recommendations came around like tips, tactics, tactical stuff, tactical, things like that. So we're gonna go with Airsoftology T squared, which stands for Airsoftology Tips and Tricks. And that's gonna kind of sum up what we do here. And of course, it's all based around your questions. I was kicking the tires and using like Airsoftology Answers or things like that, or Airsoftology Mail Call, but I really like what you guys came up with and I'm gonna stick with it. So, since we're here on the show, we've got some great things, got a ton of good questions and some other format suggestions that came from you guys in our question section. And we're also gonna be talking about what to bring with you on the airsoft battlefield as a quick field repair kit in our tip section. So, let's get this thing rolling with some questions. Planet Airsoft writes, what are the benefits and downsides of getting a power-up suppressor for any KWA gas blowback? I've heard the extra pressure created by the suppressor destroys the hop-up and nozzle. You know, to be honest, I haven't heard that. I mean, really the concept behind the power up is to give you a longer barrel and have more chance for that gas to push that BB down the barrel. And that's where you get your higher FPS. It really doesn't do too much more than just that. You can actually add a longer barrel to a lot of these gas guns and see that FPS increase and then just hide them under a suppressor. So that's really what it's doing. I've never personally used one of the angry gun suppressors, the power up versions, but I know some guys that have and they've had pretty good luck with them. I don't think you even saw that big of an accuracy decrease because you know basically you have two barrels now when you screw the one on the barrel that's now inside the other one mates up to the other one and there's kind of a seam there but I don't think anybody's had any major issues plus you're talking about SMG so you're not looking at like super long engagement distances of like 150 or 200 feet here you're still gonna be handling CQB so I say go for it I mean I don't think it's gonna cause any more wear and tear than normal uh, and good news is if you do end up getting the loading nozzle messed up or the hop up bucking they're real inexpensive expensive and easy to pick up. And the good news is KWA has a great parts website where you can place an order for any of those parts on the cheap. Naomi writes, do you think in the future for this type of video, you can give time codes in the description for each thing you talk about? I don't have a lot of free time and unfortunately can't commit to a whole 11 minute video. Not trying to insult anyone at all, I promise. Very big fan of the channel, it's just a pain skipping through. Naomi, I think that was a great idea. And in fact, if you go look in the description now, I put those in there starting in this episode. I think it's fantastic. I do understand 11, 12, 13 minutes is a long time. That's why most of my videos are like three to about six with my reviews. I try to keep them short. And But when this one came out and it runs a lot longer, I do understand for YouTube, it's a tough format to swallow for some people in the longer format. Like you just wanna to skip to the tech tip section, for example. So if you go down there and check, I've got all the time codes where you just click on the number and skip right to that part in the video. And of course, you guys are watching this on a format that won't let you click on it. You can still at least know the time code to fast forward using the scrubbing tool. Garrett D writes, where'd you get that patch on your helmet behind you? Yep, that patch is actually from Kotak Tactical. In fact, I brought my helmet back for this show because of the question you have. In fact, I've got another version that's gonna be my gear we're gonna show here in the next section with tech tips. But yeah, it's actually infrared custom made patch. I had a couple of them made for my gear and they are super nice, definitely worth the investment. I think they're around 25 bucks or something, a little on the higher end for a patch, but it's a custom patch and you can't beat it. Plus, if you have night vision, it lights up. I'm not sure if he does anything that are like illuminated as well instead of the night vision, the IR material. But anyway, you can hit him up he is a little bit slow because he's so busy getting back to you. So really be patient with him. Uh, send him a PM and he usually gets the production done in batches. New Bold View writes, face masks or goggle mesh helmet combo? Yeah, this was actually one of the more popular questions this week. And for me, I'm just a big fan of the helmet goggle mask combo. There's versatility in it. There's sometimes at certain events, I won't wear a lower mask. I mean, 99% of the time I'm gonna be running a lower mask, but I like the ability to take it off, especially if I'm back at like the Ford operating base or someplace that's relatively safe where uh, I know I'm not gonna get shot up close and then be able to put that on when I get back out on the battlefield to a more active area of play. 
I find that really kind of more versatile. Now, I do understand some fields don't allow you to take it off anywhere. Obviously, in those fields, I leave my mesh mask on all the time. And there's some fields that do require full face protection, even without a lower mesh mask. But yeah, definitely, I like the modularity of the full setup, because depending on where I play, whether I use big old full seal goggles, like I got some turbo fans I use for really long events so I don't fog up, or for short games, I'll put on like boogie regulators or like a GSI shield or something like that to run with it. It really kind of opens up my options. Phil writes, hey there, Jonathan, keep up the great videos and the one on the Dean's connectors was great. Can you also mention that cutting the battery wire individually is important and not doing it together because you could short the battery out. That is a fantastic tip. It's one of those little simple things that I overlooked uh, that for me is kind of one of those, yeah, just don't ever do it things. But yeah, if you actually clip both wires together when you cut your connectors off on any battery, especially in a LiPo, which you could really end up in trouble there, is you will cause a short, at least it'll spark. At most, you can cause some serious problems like destroy your battery, or if it's a LiPo, even catch it on fire. And this is based on last week's tech tip. If you guys haven't watched that, go back and check out the last week's show, and you can see the tech tip there. We were talking about the using Dean's over Tamiya connectors. Uh, definitely clip them one at a time. I usually put electrical tape around one that I'm not soldering. So I'll cut one, cut the other, tape them off each time, and then pull the tape off when I go to solder, just so they don't even like get a chance to touch each other. Because even a drained battery, battery has juice in it. But that's a great tip. Thank you for bringing that one up. It's one of those little bitty things you always forget about. Like for me, it's just, you know, kind of second nature, but it's worth talking if you guys have never done a battery change. And since we were just talking about tech, now's the best time to move on to the tech tip section. All right, guys, this week's tech tip doesn't actually come from a listener question, but it comes from a question I get a ton on the field, and I see a lot of people missing out on this when they go out and play. I get asked for these things all the time, and it comes to what you should bring as a field repair kit for your gun. There's a lot of little problems. In fact, as you guys have been following tech tips, there's a lot of little things that can get fixed really easily, and most of them can be resolved on the field unless you have like major internal parts breakage. And I have a little bit of a kit that I keep with me on my gear anytime I go out and play, even local skirmishes, fast games, but especially the big mil sim ops. And it consists just of a few things and they are a lifesaver to keep you back on the field especially if you guys are at like a big event and you've got to hike it all the way back to your car or your home base or wherever it is to go get your stuff to try to fix the problems. So I keep everything in my plate carrier, like here it is right here. And it's just a few things. Most of what I keep up here in my admin pouch, placement really doesn't matter, but you want it somewhere where you can get to it quickly by yourself. Don't ever count on the fact that you're gonna have a teammate there. I have been stuck in some really tough spots all by myself and had to fix a jam or something like that. So make sure you've got it someplace pretty darn handy. Uh, most of this stuff will fit in like pistol mag pouches or you can put it in a small GP. In fact, we got a little small GP here on the side, but I use that for different things like snacks and, and other stuff like that. But uh, here in the front, open it up. And the first thing, one of the most important things, and I see this left out on a lot of people's kits, is a little Allen key set. Now make sure you get the metric tool version. Now what this is, is just basically a bunch of different sized Allen keys, and this is gonna let you either get into your gun, fix a lot of the problems, make adjustments. This is a lifesaver. I use this so much. There are times where I've had to take apart my gun just because a gunk got in there, you dropped it on the ground. Also, you can use these to punch the actual pins out on your gun, depending on which version of the gun you have. So there's a lot of uses just to have one of these little Allen key sets, just like I Said, make sure to pick up the metric version and not the SAE version because almost every airsoft gun is used metric tools. And also I have a multi-tool. Now this is one, I usually have a couple different ones. I've got a Gerber one, this is actually a Leatherman, but any of them are gonna work. Anything with a set of pliers on it, a knife, and a flathead and Phillips screwdriver. If you do that, you can usually get to your motor grip. If it takes Allen screws, sometimes it takes Phillips head screws. At least you can get your motor grip off. Some of the biggest issues are like the motor wires coming disconnected, or if you have to do motor adjustment, like motor height adjustment, because it's either been pulled all the way in or that screws walk back on you, you've got the tools you need here to make that happen. This is a big one too, especially having those pliers on there. I've used that to pull out stuff and, and get junk out of my barrel, if I've dropped my barrel into the dirt or anything like that. But this is a really big lifesaver. And then the last but not least, on the back here, and I don't know if you guys can see it in the video, here at the very top, 
I wire through a unjamming rod. So every gun you know in the box, most of them have that unjamming rods. If you get like an M4 length one, they're actually pretty decent. This one's a little longer. Depending on the gun I'm using, I'll run a longer one. I found if you have a longer one and you run across somebody who has a, let's say a sniper rifle or a gun with a suppressor on it, a longer inner barrel, it's good to have a little bit longer. And I just route it down in the molly. Now make sure these things do have a tendency to get a bit brittle and you can snap them by routing them this way. So if you go with the shorter one, you can just run it vertical in the molly. Mine runs up and over. Over, but uh, you just pull it right out and you've got the cleaning and unjamming rod. This thing is invaluable when you get out on the battlefield because there's so many problems with jams, especially people who use cheap BBs, not really good BBs, or if you've gotten gunk in your magazine and you've got dirt up there with the BBs as they load, all those things can happen, especially, like I said, in those big Milsim events or if you're out playing skirmish in a field or something like that. It's pretty common to get dirt and debris up into that uh, hop-up chamber and then again down in the barrel and those can cause jams. Plus, just to have something to clean that barrel out occasionally, now that helps a lot too. So that's pretty much it on the tools. If you guys want to get into like some of the other things that carry my kit, probably the one other thing I keep in here that's really important on top of all the other things is some anti-fog. I mean, even if you use like fan glasses, things like that, having a bit of anti-fog really helps out. And I, and I know you guys have asked this in the past, but I found for me, the Revision brand anti-fog uh, wipes work super good. Uh, they're good for like 40 or something like that uses, or actually 25 uses. It's actually Nanofilm who makes these. If you guys find Nanofilm, you can get the same ones. And one of these is good for at least a day of play, if not an entire weekend. You can pass them around to your buddies. Just make sure not to destroy the package, put it back in here and keep it together. But yeah, that's pretty much my repair and triage kit for any kind of stuff on the field that can happen. Anything beyond this, you know, I've got a problem there. I'm gonna to need to take that gun back to the Ford operating base or back to my car or workbench and really do a lot more work on it. Usually I have a bigger issue to deal with, but uh, this is gonna take care of, for me, about 75% of the problems I end up with on the field. So the question I have for you is, what do you guys keep on your field kit? Are you using a field kit? And if you are using one, do you have something in it that I don't have? Let me know down below in the comment section. I'm interested to see, because I'm always looking for new things to bring with me on the field, just in case you run into a weird problem. Well guys, that's it for Tech Tips, and now that means it is time for the video recommendation of the week, and this one comes from a company, actually, called Dylan Arrow. You may or may not know who they are, but you will know what they make. They make the 134 Delta minigun. These things are wicked. You know what I'm talking about. The 7.62, 3,000 rounds a minute minigun. And they did a little uh, field test here in the desert, a little show and tell. It's actually, video's been around for a little bit now, about five or six months, but it's definitely worth the watch. They've got a little bird, they've got like a Huey out there, and they've also got some vehicles showing off all their cool toys. And I think they shoot somewhere in the neighborhood of around 70,000 rounds. I don't know what it is, there's just something so cool about having a minigun, actually two miniguns, mounted on a little bird with tracers destroying vehicles in the desert. Uh, it's just one of those like four minutes of pure machine gun awesomeness. My only complaints on this video, to be honest, I wish they didn't put the music over top of it. I wish they left the sound of that minigun. There's just something so cool about that. I think the only cooler sound I've ever heard is the sound of an A-10 Warthog. That's like caps it all, I think, of anything. But this would be the second best, but don't let it discourage you. It's still an awesome video. They even throw some ACDC as a soundtrack behind it. So uh, if you guys have about four minutes to spare and you want to watch some serious lead flying in the air, check out Dylan Arrow's video of the 134 Delta mini gun tests. Well guys, that is it for this episode of Tips and Tricks. Thank you again for watching and appreciate you guys letting me move this thing out to Tuesday. I think you're gonna enjoy it better. It's a lot more relaxed. I can spend some more time editing on it. And I like the name change. I like the whole T-squared Tips and Tricks thing. So uh, thank you guys for all the advice for every single one of you that chimed in. Even if I didn't pick your solution and for the name change, it still helped get it to where it is. And don't forget in the comments is where you guys can ask your questions and anything technical you'd like to see me cover in the next show. But until then, guys, get out there, play some airsoft, but no matter what you do, just call your freaking hits. All right, guys, this week's tech tip doesn't actually come from a question, but more for something that I've kind of been seeing and I get asked a lot when I'm on the field, and it's what should you bring with you as a field repair kit? <laughs> that falls over. Timber!